Arctic is burning. Reports of Arctic wildfires have been popping up all over the news during recent weeks. Since the start of June, so in the last six weeks roughly, Copernicus CAMS, as it's called, has tracked more than 100 intense and long-lived wildfires in the Arctic Circle. It's the season for forest fires. And with recent reports of temperatures hitting new highs, we're seeing dramatic pictures of wildfires from all over the world, including the ones in the Arctic Circle. In the U.S. alone, forest fires now occur five times more frequently than they did in the 70s and 80s. At the same time, the areas affected by wildfires have grown over the years. Studies show that the annual area burned in California, for example, has increased more than five-fold since the 1970s. But what's the reason for this trend? Who's responsible? The answer? We are. As global warming causes temperatures on our planet to rise, more water is drawn out of the soil and evaporates, making trees and other plants more susceptible to catching fire. Amid all this dry plant life, forest fires start with an ignition event. Even though there are some natural causes for wildfires, not all of them start on their own accord. Most are caused by humans. The 2018 Mendocino Complex fires were the largest wildfire in California's history. They were sparked by a man who simply tried to plug a wasp nest with a hammer. After the ignition event, whatever it might be, winds, flying embers, dense patches of trees, dry undergrowth, and dead plant matter help small fires to grow and spread, joining together to result in a wildfire. This is bad news for our climate. As plants and animals burn in the flames, they release CO2 into the air. In June alone, these fires emitted 50 megatons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. This is the equivalent of Sweden's annual total CO2 emissions. In total, wildfires are estimated to cause up to 10% of annual global CO2 emissions. In order to prevent and combat the negative impact of wildfires, governments have developed an effective firefighting infrastructure over the last century. Professionals work hard to extinguish wildfires as fast as possible. But the long-term effect of fire suppression are not all positive. Fire has been um, successfully uh, suppressed for over a century. And, and as a result, those forests have accumulated uh, unusually large amounts of dead fuel. And so they're highly susceptible to big fires. So we're seeing more and more big fires today in these forested areas because of 100 years of management of fire suppression. Small fires are a part of a natural cycle that helps the environment regenerate itself by killing sick plants or harmful insects and removing dead plant matter from the forest floor. The ashes left behind by a fire are rich in nutrients that then help new plants to grow. Small control fires can play a vital part in helping an ecosystem renew itself. Fire itself can limit the spread of other fires. In the wilderness areas, fire will burn up to an old fire scar and go out. So we create what looks like a big quilt, a big giant mosaic across the landscape. Small fires, big fires, all create barriers to larger fire spread. So it actually creates a, a healthier system by having smaller, more frequent fires than larger high intensity fires that we always see on the news. Forest fires can also create habitats for life that is adapted to the harsh environment of a post-wildfire ecosystem. Plants like the lodgepole pine have developed serotonous seeds, which require an environmental trigger to open. The seeds of the lodgepole pine have adapted to only open when they're exposed to very high temperatures, such as those from the forest fire. When the pine cones open, the seeds are released and fall onto the carbon-rich soil. Lodgepole pines thrive in this unique environment, which is why they pop up in thick clusters after forest fires in the American Northwest. It's not just plants that have adapted to the forest fires. The black-backed woodpecker mainly chooses to live in areas recently swept through by wildfires. They make their nest by drilling holes in the trees burned in the fire, eat insects left exposed on the branches, and spread leftover seeds from the trees they're nesting in. 
And as soon as the blackback woodpecker leaves its nest for good, animals like chipmunks take them over as ready-built new homes. Small forest fires are an integral part of the natural life cycle in areas like this. It's important to understand, you know, you can have species that are adapted to fire, but it doesn't mean they're adapted to all fire regimes. And if you get too much fire, it actually can be detrimental. Yet more severe forest fires pose a serious threat, not only to humans, but also to plants and animals. With global warming drying out many areas and the dangerous effect of inefficient fire management, many regions are now becoming a cradle for larger wildfires. As these fires increase in size and become more difficult to control, they're becoming a serious issue for places that might rely on smaller fires, but are certainly not equipped to deal with the devastation caused by a large, raging wildfire. The Arctic is burning, and there's no one to extinguish it but us.